What's up guys, my name is Mark Steiner and today we're going to be using the brand new Apple Pencil Pro with the brand new M4 iPad Pro and I thought what better way to use that than editing some photos in Lightroom. So let's get right into it. Now I have been really intrigued by the Apple Pencil for a long time but I never felt the need to get one myself personally because I am not really that kind of artist, I'm not a drawer, I don't do that kind of stuff with my Apple Pencil. And that's why I usually opt for a keyboard and mouse or the keyboard case because that is much more my speed. So I felt like this time around it was just time for me to try something new and I was itching to make a little purchase and uh, I think this is going to be really fun. So I thought what better way to test this out than editing some photos because it's not always the most fun experience doing it on iPad with mouse and keyboard. Obviously you can do it because that's what I've been doing for a really long time but I thought why not test this out and see how it works out? And I think that this can be really interesting seeing the ease of use because this actually feels a lot better than having to go like this. So I do like what the Apple Pencil has to offer just in this scenario here. I can talk more about my experience with the Apple Pencil, but you're not gonna get the new squeeze features or like double tap on here when we're editing photos because it just doesn't have those features on it. That's more for the handwriting and artists, which I am not one, at least not with a pencil. I am an artist with a camera. Uh, but yeah, I thought that we could just edit some photos and it could be very calm and chill and you can enjoy my process for editing photos and seeing how that goes. So I think that I kind of want to emphasize some things with some masking on this image. So we're just gonna come down to the radial gradient and I'm just going to draw around here and then I'm going to invert it and we're going to bring this down. So there's a little bit more emphasis on this woman right here. And I think that looks pretty cool. I hit done. And then you can just hold it for the before and after and already we're looking pretty dope here. I like that. I am going to raise the shadows because I want a little bit more detail elsewhere. And then if I come down here to effects, I can increase the dehaze, uh, which I might do just a little bit. And if I zoom in here, there's quite a bit of detail. So I'm gonna hit clarity, see if I want to increase that, maybe like plus five. Yep, that's good. And then texture, do I wanna increase texture? Hmm, don't really need to, but just a little bit will help. I think that looks, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm liking that. So we're gonna come down to color, and if we're gonna go to color mix, I'm seeing this green here. I kinda want that to pop just a little bit more. And I'm just gonna play with the sliders here. I'm going to decrease saturation. I'm gonna raise luminance just a little bit. And I want the hue to be a little bit more mm, like that. Let's see if it shows up. Ah, oh, there we go, okay. So I want it to be a little bit less deep green and a little bit more yellow green. There we go. So increase luminance here. I think we'll bring it down just a little bit. Reds, you know I love my reds, so I'm gonna keep that pretty red. I'm gonna increase saturation there. Luminance, we're just gonna de... Hmm. Yeah, luminance, that looks pretty good, honestly. Then, ooh, wow, a lot. Oh, because of the lighting, it's showing up as orange versus red hues that is interesting okay okay i'm gonna kind of desaturate just a little bit gonna increase luminance just a tad just a tad okay and i'm liking that i think that's a pretty good start to the before and after of this image yeah if we go full screen here before after it looks a far more intriguing than I thought it would be. So that's that's nice, I like that. I think that photo is done. We're gonna move on to the next one. I really like this image and I think there's a lot we can do with it. So firstly, I'm gonna come up to my brows. I'm gonna come to camera matching. This was shot on the Fuji X106. And my two favorites are Classic Chrome and Classic Neg. And that is basically all I really use with Fuji cameras because they are gorgeous. And um, we're kind of washed out here a little bit. And I think what can help resolve that is some dehaze. And you can see it recovers quite a bit. Obviously we're exaggerating this effect just to see how things look, but I think plus 20 is a good start. And then I'm gonna zoom in here 
to see how much clarity and texture I want to add and how much it's going to affect the image. So I think that looks pretty good, honestly. So already the before and after is looking good and we've only changed like four things. And that's the beauty of Fuji images, honestly. It just looks so freaking good. So the next thing I wanna do is add some contrast. But because we've already done the dehaze, I don't need to add too much. I'm going to decrease highlights just a little bit. And then I'm going to increase shadows just a little bit. Whites, I'm going to brighten that just a bit. And then blacks, I'm going to bring back some contrast there. And then overall, I'm going to bring up my exposure just a smidgen. And the thing that I'm seeing that needs to happen the most is uh, select sky. So it's going to do that with the new AI features in Lightroom Mobile. And I'm going to hit light. I'm going to bring down the highlights and then I'm going to mess with exposure just a little bit. If we get minus like, yeah, minus 0.10, it looks pretty good. Let's see if I do contrast, might be a little bit out of place. So I'm going to come down to dehaze and see if I can dehaze a little bit more on the sky and if it still looks pretty good. And I think it does. We're going to come down to color and I'm just going to mess with white balance. And I'm going to leave that as is because I think that's pretty good. I'm going to increase vibrance just a little bit, maybe like plus 10. And then I'm going to come down to the color mix. I'm going to just start messing with the hue on a couple things. And I kind of want my oranges to be a bit more yellow. I want my yellows to be a bit more yellow as well, a bit more orange. And then I can just decrease luminance on red, see how that's affecting things. And increase saturation eh, just a little bit. And then hue. I'm gonna bring that much more to the left. And then blue. Let's see. What is this affecting? Quite a bit is showing up as blue, which is quite interesting. I do want to increase saturation just a little bit. I'm pretty happy with how the hue is. I might go just mm, maybe like minus minus two. Yeah, that looks good. All right, next image. I really love this image. I really, really love this image. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna hit here. I'm going to come to Classic Chrome or Classic Neg. Mm, this one's tough. I think I'm going to go with Classic Neg and then I'm going to come down to my effects. Once again, I'm going to hit Dehaze and I'm just going to increase this by like 15-ish. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to hit some contrast. That looks good. I like that. I'm going to really decrease highlights because I think that's where a lot of this image comes in. I want this subject to stand out, so I'm going to come into my masking and I'm going to do a radial gradient right here. And I'm going to invert that and I'm going to do this, bring that down. Maybe not down that much, but I will bring down my highlights some more. And what I also will do is I'm going to hit the brush right here. I'm just going to brush our boy in right here, which is decent and a much better job than I could have done without the Apple Pencil. And this is, oop, no, I'm moving the mask. I don't want to move the mask. I want to add to the mask. There we go. And so here I'm just going to kind of raise exposure there and then I'm going to move out. And now I'm debating whether or not I want to have this actually increased or I just kind of want it silhouetted. So I'm curious to see how that looks. I think what I'm going to do for now is add a linear gradient right here coming up to his feet and I'm going to bring this down and then I'm going to actually come to my crop up here because we have a lot of just like wasted space with this. So I'm kind of just gonna bring this down here hit done and now we have this really nice like wide crop going on and I'm just gonna crop this even more honestly and I think that looks pretty freaking sweet I'm just gonna increase vibrance just a little bit and then I'm going to come to my color grading and I'm gonna increase this and just kind of see what looks good and then go from there I kind of like the warmer vibe in the shadows so let's go orange and increase that just a little bit mid-tones let's go look like the more yellowish yeah that looks pretty good i'll add some saturation there and then highlights this one can be a little bit more on like the greenish bluish 
Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to bring that down and kind of have that a little bit there. So color grading is there, and then the color mix, I want to have a little bit more on the red side. Yeah, the red side. Saturation. Up. Luminance. Up just a bit. And then yellow as well. Ooh, a lot is showing up as yellow. So I think I'm going to increase saturation just a little bit. Yeah. And then I might bring this to the more orange side. And then orange, obviously a lot is showing up as orange, so I'm going to go there, and I'm going to increase saturation. Cool. I'm happy with that. The before, and this is the after, and I think it looks really cinematic. Moving on to this image. It's a lot cleaner. Let's try Classic Neg, my favorite, and we're just going to do some cropping here. And you know what? I'm going to lock this and see how that looks. And then I'm gonna come down to geometry. I think auto is pretty good. And here I'm going to come down and mask our subject. And we're just gonna bring that down. Maybe not minus 78, maybe like minus, yeah, there we go. That looks good. So instantly drawing your attention more to here and then I'm going to crop this. So he's a, I want to have the, yeah, there we go, okay. So I want this as my rule of thirds guideline. Okay, that's good. I'm happy with that. Is there any way to do some generative remove? This is one of the new features in the brand new Adobe update. And so I'm very intrigued to see if it can get rid of these lines. And it can. Wow, that is clean. I really like that. That is a great feature to have on the mobile version of Lightroom. I think that looks really, really good. Now, we're just gonna increase contrast just a little bit. Gonna lower highlights just a little bit. Increase shadows just a little bit. Whites might increase barely. And I'm liking how this image is coming out. If we go before and after, wow. What a difference. Yeah, I really like that. You know what? I kind of want to push the limit of this new generative thing and see how well it does if I just draw on this pole. Dang. Oh my goodness. Not bad at all. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. That's great. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. I think this will be our last image for the day, so let's just do this real quick. And I think I want to probably go with Classic Chrome just because it brings out the blues in this image a lot more, and that's kind of my favorite part of Classic Chrome. So I'm just going to increase vibrance ever so slightly. And then I'm going to come down to light exposure. This is pretty dang well exposed. There's not much that I need to do here. I might increase ever so slightly, increase contrast ever so slightly. Highlights are looking pretty good. Shadows are looking pretty good. Whites. I might increase whites just a little bit. Blacks. I might bring down just a little bit for contrast sake. Let's go to dehaze just to see what I can do with that. I might do dehaze like plus four color. I think we're looking really, really good. There's not a lot I have to do this image. Like Japan is just so naturally beautiful. I think I will bring down the hue just a little bit, not that crazy, but maybe like minus, minus five. Increase saturation, uh, probably no need, but if I do luminance, I'll do like minus five. And then here you can see what is showing up as the teal aquas as well. So I might do a little bit more to the teal side just to differentiate from the original blue. Increase saturation and just decrease luminance ever so slightly. But yeah, I think we are looking pretty freaking good. There is no real changes that I need to make to this image because it looks fantastic. And man, this screen on the M4 iPad Pro is gorgeous. It looks so freaking good. So. That's it today. This is me using the Apple Pencil Pro with the new M4 iPad Pro, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to stick around for the full review coming soon, be sure to like and subscribe. My name is Mark Steiner, and I'll see you next time.